Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast, guys. Cody, we are recording now. We just went through about two <laughs> minutes of our intro and didn't have the record button on, but we're running and firing on full cylinders right now. Uh, Cody, it's great to be here. Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, sun shining, 80 degrees out. I've got shorts on. It's a beautiful Fair thing. Fair weather friend. Yes, for sure. Here I am. Only comes to see us when it's good weather. Yep. I'm excited to be here uh, all fall, all winter, and all spring. Uh, I've got a bunch of bighorn sheep uh, scouting the whole month of November here uh, right in front. of got some great tags and excited about that, excited to be here. Uh, Cody, you had a great hunt, uh, early rifle hunt unit 23 north with some friends. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that and then let's dive into the questions sure. here. Uh, yeah, my uh, my wife's cousin Zach Buys had the, uh, the uh, 23 uh, north uh, early rifle tag. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better hunt. Couldn't have asked for a better tag. Uh, you know, Zach's a Phoenix firefighter. Um, he had a couple of buddies come with him, Jordan Redfield and, uh, and, uh, Peter Sermon, um, couldn't ask for better hands in the field. I mean, just an awesome experience. Um, was super excited that it was 23 did not disappoint, uh, Jay. It, uh, it kind of reminded me of the old school. Old days. You know, the old days, uh, 23 was, I mean, it was on fire in terms of the rut. Of course, you know, it's not, it wasn't until the later in the month. Um, and by all reports and everything that I, you know, knew and, and people I talked to, you know, we kind of hit it right smack dab in the middle of the rut. Uh, we ended up killing a, an absolutely beautiful bull. Um, you know, he's broke up a little bit on the, on the uh, right side fourth. And, you know, he's still a 365 bull. Um, absolutely, uh, couldn't have asked for a better experience. Cool. Glassed up a bunch of bulls. Glassed up a bunch of bulls on that hunt. Looked like you were kind of, um, testing some different optics and stuff. Yeah. Looked like I, you uh, used a very, various. I, 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 I got to, well, I, I was doing a bunch of stuff. I was testing some Suray, uh, heads and, um, and then I was also using, um, uh, comparing the the fifteens and the UHDs and and really kind of putting a bunch of time behind them couldn't have uh, couldn't have asked for a better experience to do that. Um, the eighteens were and I and basically and it wasn't just me testing them. I, you know I let the guys test them and and uh, and in the eighteen UHDs did not disappoint. They did a really good job. Um, again, for guys that that don't. Uh, want a spotting scope and you want a little extra power uh you know jay there's some spots that we were in that i know you've been in and to have that extra three power i was actually pretty impressed with them good and uh, it was it was it was pretty nice to look across to some of those places and and see the detail that we could see with those glasses so awesome. um the Swarovskis are you know they still Still did what they do, and and I and I love them for that. But uh, I I tell you, it, it did not bother me one ounce to to sit behind the UHDs. Awesome. So you know, uh, guys, uh, if this first time you're listening to the podcast, Cody is the optics manager at GoHunt.com at the gear shop, and um, you know, it's been I keep telling twenty plus years. It's it's probably closer to twenty five plus years uh, yeah. now uh, that we've been friends. I was actually in your wedding. We've yep. known each other a long, long time. Uh, Cody is the optics manager over there, guys. If you have any optics needs at all, binos, tripods, spotting scopes, range finders, rifle scopes, you name it. Anything to do with optics, give Cody a call. Um, 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. I put out on my Instagram about a week ago a bunch of questions or you know questions that people would have, and we got a bunch. So let's just go ahead and dive into them and get to as yeah, many as we can. let's hammer them out. Love it. Uh, we've got a question here from Bryce Morrow, 13. What's a good tripod for someone who is 6'3 and prefers standing while glassing? Before you answer that, Cody, one thing I would encourage the listeners out there is, you, you know, there is a time and place for standing and glassing. We've talked about on this podcast before. I really recommend sitting if possible. You know, if, there, if there's some medical reason or if your back's out or, you know, you've got you know, disc issues or something where you can't sit, that's one thing. But for your young guys out there, um, you know, running and gunning and standing and glassing is okay. Uh, but for your detailed glassers, your coos deer hunters, 
uh, you know, when you're really getting detail oriented, I really recommend sitting down uh, either in a, in a small glassing chair or on a, a pad. I actually use a, a glassing pad and sit down and try and get the tripod as low as possible. Uh, yep. And also, speaking of that, we've done a bunch of these Q&A um, podcasts where we've answered a, a lot of these. Uh, so go back and listen to those. But Cody, a 6'3 guy, standing tripod. Yeah, just in, and I think the biggest thing that, that guys need to remember, you don't need to measure, you know, to the to the top of the head, measure to the eyes. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I've had a few people that literally have, have not gotten a tripod or what, because they may be 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that, and they, they kind of do the figuring and it doesn't get that high. Well, it, it only has to be as high as your eyes are. So, um, Jay, I totally agree with everything that you just you know just said um try to keep the the tripod small and and you know try to keep yourselves off the horizons you know that's i think that's just kind of hunting 101 but um in the case that you do need to stand up um you know the slick 733s um you know like the manfrotto 055s uh the other one i like maybe the the uh the 190 goes um you know uh i'm sorry the the 290 extras uh, either carbon or aluminum. Um, I think any of those tripods will work. Um, just remember, you're gonna you're gonna measure to the top of the the uh, the center column, and then you're gonna put uh, two and a half, three inches on top of that with the head, and then you've got like a bino adopter, you know, which is gonna be two or three inches on top of that. So you know, by the time you start adding all that up, you're gonna get to that six foot, you know, plus. Um, so I think guys just need to to really kind of measure you know out where they're at and then look at the gear they want and then add the head and add the you know vinyl adapter or you know the spotting scope on top of that yeah and i answered an instagram question last night on my q and a i'm six three on a good day uh and this is 733 with the sure va5 yep. head um i can stand in glass with my 15s yep. no problem and it's a it, it's a four pound package yeah so how you know how you, you get you know, arguably the, the, the one of the best heads on the market, and you get 733 with that stability, and, uh, you know, at four pounds, I just, I don't know how you beat that package. Yeah, I've had the same slick tripod. This, um, it's basically the 733 now, what is right. it now, the 733, and I've had it for, I want to say, close to 15 years. Yep. I just put a new 733 in the lineup a couple days ago, so um, slick is a great product, carbon fiber. Um, I've used the Manfrotto as well. Uh, next question here, I know, let's see, hunt to eat underscore AZ. It says, I know you probably answered this many times, uh, but Vortex versus Zeiss, or Vortex glass versus versus Zeiss. That's his question. Well, um, uh, well, it depends because I, I'm not sure if he's talking about, you know, like Zeiss's HT glass versus the UHTs. Um, you know, if you're talking about Zeiss's high-end SF or HT glass, um, you're arguably talking about some of the best glass in the world. Um, and I would, you know, I, I don't mind saying this, that I don't think that the Vortex is, is up to that. Um, if you're talking about, say, like the Conquests versus the UHD, it becomes a much closer, uh, you comparison. know, argue, uh, comparison um, uh, of which... You know, I love the Zeiss 15 uh, Conquest HDs. I think it's an awesome piece of glass. I think the question you have to answer at that point is, do you want 15s or do you want 18s? Um, I'm still a person that w I appreciate the brightness in the field of view m at that power more than I do the, 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 the you know, the absolute power. Um, so, I, I, again, I think it's a trade-off and people need to, you know, put their own eyes behind the glass. And I think they need to understand what they're getting, you know, with the power difference versus the field of view and the brightness. Yeah, and I think as we've talked before, I mean, everybody's at a different point in their life where price point becomes a huge factor. And Correct. You know, I keep going back to as a consumer in this day and age, it's a phenomenal opportunity because I can remember times when there was not the choices that we have now. Oh. And that's one of the things that I think, Cody, you do such a good job. I get feedback from uh, listeners and people that follow my Instagram literally every day where you've walked them through every one of their options and talked about what type of hunting you do you know, all of the different scenarios of, you know, terrain, vegetation, sure. animal type, 
you know, local, you know, geography where they're at right. in the country. And, and, uh, so guys, that's where Cody can really, you know, kind of hone you in and, and help you, uh, find those things. Next question. Uh, it says 90% of my spots are bare eye. Then I confirm with binos, good game eye or bad with glass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would, you know, this is from Cole dot uh, Trichel. The one thing I would say is if 90% of your spots are bare eye, you're either looking at a very close proximity yeah. and or you're looking in very thick vegetation, thick timber. Um, I would get to where, you know, I, I think this question is a little bit of a fun question. Good game eye or, or bad with glass. Maybe both. Maybe both. But but the the reality is... You know, some of the eights, some of the yeah. sevens, some well, of the tens. Yeah. That's I mean, what I was kind of leaning towards is like, even if I'm, you know, glassing and I can see something standing out there with my eyes. I mean, I, I just turned 49 and my eyes aren't what they used to be, but I I, I still would rather look, you know, through an eight or eight and a half. 100%. You know, and, and really know what I'm looking at rather than just go, oh, it's a big, you know, I mean. Yeah, and I mean, even if you have 20-year-old eyes, you know, the detail, you throw eight power on there with any of the manufacturers, right. whether it be the top end or the middle end yep. or the lower end, it's going to be better than your naked eye. I, I um, would absolutely agree. Next question from C. Newman 2712, uh, best 15 power for the money and why i'll start out with that for me um swarovski 15s are kind of in my mind at the top of the food chain i believe i've had three or four generations of 15s i've had every generation of 15 the new 15s are just absolutely spectacular and when i say new i got them probably two three years ago about right um and they're just absolutely outstanding anybody that's doing some real detail oriented glassing uh, trying to pick out every little thing, you know, maybe some bighorn sheep hunters, coos deer hunters, um, you know, mule deer hunters. Uh, the, the, the 15 is very, very hard to beat in my mind yeah. in the Swarovski. I, I, I think it, 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 again, it leans and lends itself, I'm sorry, it leans, lends itself back to going to, hey, look, um, there's a lot of, of binoculars uh, in the 15 range that, you know, when you talk about Vortex Kaibabs and the in the loophole Santiams, you can do a lot of things with, you know, say twelve or thirteen hundred bucks, or you can go up to the Zeiss at, at seventeen ninety nine or, you know, the UHDs at, at sixteen ninety nine. And and I think at a certain point you really have to make that determination what do your eyes see out of those binoculars? And, and, you know, I, you could maybe say I'm dodging the question by just naming one that's the best for the money. Well, I mean, I don't know what someone's, you know, pocketbook looks like. So, how, I mean, I could tell you that, you know, uh, the Vortex uh, Kaibabs, if you're doing that and, and you see well through them and you focus, you're going to find deer with them. I think it's more important to have the glass and put it on a tripod um, then, then, then to pick, you know, maybe between the loophole and the, in the vortex or the UHDs and the Zeiss. So I think you have to really start putting your eyes behind stuff and, and figuring out where your dollar is best spent. Um, because for me, I'm that kind of person that I want the best glass possible only because I know exactly what it means to me in the field. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for me, you know, that's a different, you know, money thing I, I i want the best glass and i'm that guy that sits there after i bought something and gone god should i have bought the other one mm -hmm. and you know it's that that buy once cry once mm -hmm. kind of theory so um yeah i i just i think you got to put yourself behind the glass and figure out what your pos you know what your 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 uh, uh pocketbook says and figure out which one you know you can purchase at that level i i, I think that's a personal question Next question here is from uh, J underscore W Miller. East Coast big timber and farmland hunting 8x42s or 10x42s in the SLCs. I All mean, day long eights. Yeah, I mean, I know you're a huge eight proponent, and I would definitely think if, you're, if you've got that big timber contingent there thrown in, you know, if he was just saying big farm ground, big ag ground, I'd maybe go with the tens. But I think you're right with the wider field of view, eight yep. power. Um, you know, you're gonna have less power, but a wider field of view. You're gonna be able to pick stuff up up off the edges. Um, I I agree with you on the eights. Uh, 
someone here, a, a Haas Guide Service, uh, Julius, uh, up on the San Carlos Haas Guide Service. He's, oh, okay. he's an unbelievable uh, guide. He says Swarovski's still the best. Um, I don't know whether he's talking spotting scopes or what. Uh, Swarovski, for me, still is fantastic. Uh, you know, I think, again, not to beat a dead horse, but, you know, Zeiss, Leica, um, some of the stuff that uh, Vortex is doing. Uh, and the other manufacturers, I mean, like you said, you kind of have to, is it the best? Well, it might be the best for my eyes, but it might not be the best for your eyes. Um, you know, so, well, Jay, yeah, it's sure w- dang good, it, uh, that's for sure. Did I see on your story the other day, I thought it was really interesting. There was a gentleman that was talking about a couple different pair of binoculars, and he said something about, you know, his eyes. Um, he has both, maybe it was the the Mavens and the and the Swarovski, and he was talking about the, you know, because he, he was maybe colorblind or had some condition that he could, you know, see better out of one versus the other. And, and I think that that exemplifies exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Is that sometimes you just got to go put your eyes behind the glass to the, you know, and, and get in a scenario where you can do it so that you understand what works for you. Yep. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. Here's a question from Chasing Wapiti Blues. Uh, what's a solid tripod head for BTX 95? You know, I think that's Sure VA5. I mean, it's, I don't it's have to smoke and smooth. I mean, just really, really Sure smooth. VA5 is butter smooth. Um, Jay on that elk hunt in 23, that's what I was doing a lot of different stuff with. Um, I, I absolutely was trying the, the, you know, the 65, the, the 95, the 85, and with the extender, without the extender, and just trying to kind of put it through its paces and, and, and make sure that all my scenarios were covered. I, I would use that tripod and head combination uh, with the VA5 any time, no questions asked, period. VA5 all day long. Yep. Uh, the kid underscore, let's see, the underscore kid archer. Better to run the SLC 10 by 42 and Swaro 65 with the BTX eyepiece or get SLC 10 by 42, 15 by 56, and a 65 millimeter angled. Uh, the one thing I would add to this is, you know, you're running 10 by 42s. Uh, you've got the Swaro 65, and then you're going to use the BTX eyepiece. Um, that's actually a great combination. It, it is a great combination. You know, you're at, you're at 25 power by 65 millimeter with the BTX. Well, I've, no, you, well, did he say it? He if said he's going with the, BTX 65, with the 65, with the 65, he'll be at 30 power. Okay. But I, I thought I the 30 gonna, power was only if it's at 85 or 95. Objective. No, no, no. The, it, it's, it's, uh, 60, it's, I'm sorry, 65 and 85 or 30 power. And the ninety five is thirty five is, is thirty five power. Okay. So I was con- I thought he was thinking I thought there was a spotting scope. So he's just saying the modular. Well, no, he's B- he's saying the BTX in in the ten by forty twos in a system, and then he's saying or get the SLC ten by forty twos and the fifteen by fifty six and run a sixty five millimeter angled STX spotting scope. So oh. one thing I um, would say there is just make sure you understand that the BTX is a phenomenal piece of glass and it goes in the long range glassing category you know 4.14 pounds at 65 and you know if you run all the way up to 95 you're going to be looking at six and a half pounds but keep in mind that that's a fixed uh, eyepiece so you're either at the 30 power or the 35 power fixed whereas if you went with the uh, 65 millimeter angled right and went with a you know let's call it a spotting scope Correct. eyepiece, not a double eye eyepiece, you then, at that point, you will have the option of v- going in variable power. Correct. Um, so that's just something to, to think there's, about. There's and a, again, don't you think it depends on what is he hunting? I, well, I think it's what are you hunting? Um, and let's not forget that the 10s, a 15, and a spotter, like that was, I mean, that's like... Yeah. I mean, that's just, that was the equipment. That was like required equipment. Right. Standard. And, and that's standard for what we would normally do. So, you know, th- and I'll tell you what's made this interesting. I know we've talked about this, but I still think it's, it's, I'm learning stuff about it every day and I'm finding scenarios where I want one versus the other. I think the BTX, the 65, 85, or 95, 
I think it's the piece of gear as of late that has literally just changed people's um it it's made them question their gear choices because it gives them so much more range of versatility. Yep. And and I, and I don't think that there's a wrong scenario. Um I, I like that guy's idea of of going tens in a, in a in, in a BTX with with one of the or a 65. Um I think it would be incredibly capable. Um, he might be a little, you know, on the low end of the long range spotting in terms of, in terms of like, if you really wanted, you know, more detail. Right. But again, though, I, that's I mean, what animal are you hunting it, it, primarily? Ex- exactly. I mean, some guy that's hunting in Idaho and is never looking at a coos deer might be a totally different answer than someone that lives in Southern Arizona and he's really focusing on a coos deer. Absolutely. So, you know, guys, um, it's important if you have those questions, give Cody a call and he can kind of work through that. Uh, with you always happy to work those scenarios uh if you could have this is george warner too if you could have one pair of binos would you go with a 10 or 15 power and he says western deer hunting you know i i I look at that and say well what are you going to have around your neck because you're probably not well, going to carry a pair of 15s around your God, neck. So it's always tough. When if these you're just going to have one, I think you got to have a 10 power because yeah. you have to have something around your neck. You have to have a tripod adaptable. Um, I, if you're just going to go with one, I think a 10 I, power. Because I want to start asking, do I get a range finder in there? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I mean... Do I, do I just have to have one? Do I have, can I have a CRF? Like a, you know, like in Jay, you know, you guys, well, there was a time not too long ago, people thought I was crazy because I didn't carry a chess class. I would use the, the, the Leica CRFs and I would use them to spot game at, 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 at you know, it's at, at, at shorter distances. And then I would have my 15s in a pack and a spotting scope. So, I mean, I don't know. There's if if I got a if I have a way to see something with my my rangefinder, I might use that to spot game just as I'm moving and until I get a glassing point, and then I want the 15s. But I think again, um, for general western hunting, man, uh, a 10 a ten is still king yeah. in terms of you know what do all, all. the the do all versatility. Yeah. Next question, AZ Nico and IKKO already own 15 by 50s and 20 by, excuse me, 20 by 56s. Is it value add to purchase a spotting scope? Well, my, well, I think it kind of goes back to the, the question. Do you like using a spotting scope? Exactly. Because that's the same thing with the eighteen fifty sixes or um, yeah, the eighteen fifty sixes UHDs or the um, the uh, the Vortex uh, uh, Kaibabs, you know, in the eighteens. I think you have to answer that question. Is if you can get enough detail out of those twenties, by all means, I think that's a great thing to use. Um, but if you're hunting, you know, coos deer, and we're trying to figure out if a buck's, you know. 101 versus you know 104 or five or whatever i I, you know i still want a good spotting scope got a question here chasing wapiti blues again another question do you ever hang anything from the center of the tripod way to rock to stabilize the tripod um all these tripods most of them come with a little um j-ring hook if you will to hang something down i never do uh, I don't find it necessary with the 733 slick and the uh, Sure VA5 head. I just don't see that being necessary. I could see if you were in heavy, heavy wind and you were really trying to look long distances, you definitely can stabilize the tripod and dampen, take the vibration sure. out of it. But it's not something I've ever seen you do. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've done it for the sake of doing it, but it's not something that I, I do regularly. I think it's important... Um, I mean, you know, if you talk about glassing technique, so to speak, if the wind's that heavy, um, I make sure that anything that can grab the wind is off my binoculars, mm-hmm. like no eye cups. I take them off. I take st- neck straps or anything that can, can move that Good vibration. And then, you know, literally is, is I call it kind of creeping up on the tripod, but as you're kind of getting up close and got, get, get your eyes in the, in the binoculars, I might grab onto the trundle with both hands and kind of cradle it, so to speak, and kind of put some weight into it. Um, 
And quite frankly, that's why I've always found that to be pretty successful. Um, I have seen guys take a, uh, a piece of uh, paracord and tie it to that, that ring at the bottom of the center column and literally have it go underneath their shoe. And when they want to dampen it, they literally pull up. You know, I mean, it, it's almost like kind of a, mm-hmm. a, a pulley, pulley system, system mm-hmm. sort of. And I've, I, I've seen guys do that. So um, I think there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of do that. But I, personally, I think it's more versatile when you're using your body weight just to kind of lean on the tripod a little bit. Um, that dampens it for me anyway. Jeremy Becker 3, October Muley and Desert Foothills glassing tips, east slopes and AM question mark, uh, bed, northeast slopes, shade, etc. Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I've tried to the last uh, couple weeks on my Instagram, you know, show some different diagrams of, you know, topo maps and onyx map uh, aerials just showing how I like to glass. But in, in a general rule of thumb, with whatever, if you're hunting elk, deer, coos deer mule deer uh those animals are going to seek shade uh especially did he give a time of year he didn't he says october mule so it's going to be warm uh, it's going to be hot they're definitely going to seek shade so um what i typically do is try and glass with the sun at my back for the first hour in the morning try and just pan power glass scan try and look as many hills as i can as quickly as possible cover as much terrain and then about 30 minutes to 60 minutes after sunup, uh, I, I definitely try and focus then on shade, whether it be trees, bushes, vegetation, cliffs, rocks, um, yep. hills. And then if you can get in the habit of, you know, from, you know, say 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning till, you know, 11, 10, 11, 12, really just look with your naked eye and say, where's the shade and just start pounding and glassing, penetrating yep. into that. Um, and then as well in the afternoons, if I just walk up to a spot and I'm going to sit down to glass and I look at a mountain and most of the time I'm going to always be facing East. Yep. I just look, where's the shadiest spot. That's where I start. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, yeah, that's I, a good I, rule of thumb. I, I agree. Best range finder for the money uh, will be used for both rifle and archery. Wow. Um, you know, God, there's so many that, that I like. Uh, we sell uh, an absolute boatload of the uh, of the loophole 1300s, loophole 1600s. They do real good for archery. Um, you know, and they're, they're extremely versatile for the rifle hunter. Uh, they make that in an 1800. Um, all of them, you know, priced really well under the, you know, $500 mark and into the, you know, uh, three and a halfs, uh, um, the, the, the Vortex Ranger, uh, 1800 has, we, I mean, we sell an absolute boatload of those too. Um, that's a, a real popular one. Um, you can mount that one on a tripod. You can also, uh, I, I love the clip on that. Um, I wish some of the other, uh, uh, manufacturers would listen to that clip idea um because I, I i love the fact that you can keep it in a case on your on your waist belt or your um or your chest harness and then um i love the fact that you can uh, wear a set of uh you know with your backpack on you can put that clip on your on your uh, your uh, sternum strap um so you got the 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 loop holds you got the vortex um i love the uh one of my favorites absolutely bar none uh because the glass is is the in what i consider the best in class is the the leica 2400r um i have been selling those a lot um you know those are priced at uh, at 4.99 and i i, I they they just perform so well so and you can do all of those with archery um, because they all do the angle compensation, and they all do the uh, um, the longer distances, so that you can you can rifle hunt with them. Um, um, that, and the that other new one vortex too, that, well, was, is it the Fury? Yeah, th- I've uh, been. Is it the Fury? Well, it's the the um, the 4, Razor Four Thousand. The Razor Four Thousand. That one, and I keep you know I, I don't mean to leave that one out, but um, I've been man, using it that, all fall. It's I phenomenal. Say, yeah, I think it's a fantastic rangefinder. Um, you know, Jeremy called up and. And, and he, he was using yours. He's like, hey, I got to have one of these. And so we got him one of those. And so I, I 
you know, the bottom line is, is that that's another great addition. Um, I have not had as much field experience with that as I, as I do the others. So, um, but I think it's a, it's a great piece of gear and I think they all need to be looked at in that category. What is the future of optics and how will things evolve from what we have today? That's from bow hunting, Arizona. Wow. You know, that's such a big question. Um, I think if I just, I, I know that by some of the things that have come out in spotting scopes and, and, you know, I, I think that the, the, the manufacturers are always going to be pushing the, the, um, the envelope as much as we can anyway to, to, to make them as bright and, you know, as good a field of view and edge to edge quality and all those things. And I think if you look at where we've come in the last 20 years, I mean, I can remember when nobody had 10 to 42 SLCs and, and those, you know, things were just evolving and we thought, Oh, when the ELs came out, Oh, they can't be that much better than the SLCs. And all of a sudden, boom, it was like, Holy cow, those are bright. Mm -hmm. And now you've had this, you know, uh, a surge of, in what I would call the, I, I mean, I hate putting numbers or whatever, but tier two glass, um, and, and, and they, they just keep pushing on the the, oh, the, yeah. the, the the ceiling a little bit and making the other guys really pay attention to what's coming. And, and I just, I love all that competition. I love where things were going. Um, I would tell you that I think the biggest leap or, or where we're going to see improvements and things that will blow our mind is I think you're going to continue to see the Bluetooth capabilities mm -hmm. of rangefinders. Um, and, and binoculars. And, um, I think the technologies with the range finders, um, somebody's going to do something here soon. And I, 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 I applaud it. Keep pushing it. Keep, cause I don't, I don't think we're a hundred percent there yet. I think there's really good products out there, but I don't think we've worked out every single bug and given people, you know, to kind of do all everything. And, and I mean, that means, you know, with the quality of the glass and the, 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 the lasers themselves and how everything functions together, I, I think we're just barely touching Scratching that stuff. Surface. I really do. Yeah. So I'm excited for it. Uh, best 500 to 1,000 binos. Um, you know, one of my favorites, and I'll, and I'll say this, if we're just talking like 1042s, um, Man, I, m one of my favorites is still the the original Razer 10 by 42 uh, HDs. Uh, I love the way that glass feels. I love the size of it. Um, you know, uh, I think the other one you got to look at in that in that category is the uh, um, the Conquest HDs 1042s. But both the Zeiss. Those, yeah, the Zeiss 1042 Conquest and and the Razer, uh, you know, the the, the original uh, HD Razers. Um, I think those are two really good strong performers at that that money okay for, for uh, that money w allen rock says can you add a quick release gun mount to your tripod is it advisable uh of course you can uh, if you take a uh uh you know uh, uh the triclops um and if everybody doesn't know what the triclops is um the triclops is a is a uh, tripod mounted gun vice that you can do one of two ways. You can either keep it on your gun and then, you know, with, with the plate underneath that you slide into your, to your, uh, your tripod head, or you can just have it mounted on your tripod head. Or like I do, I keep one in the pack. And if the boys or myself are going to shoot, then we slide it on the tripod head and then mount it up. And there's a solo, uh, the, the one that I like the best is the solo. Um, it has a single, uh, you know, handle that you turn and tighten up, um, and you can balance the, the gun on, on the tripod. Um, I, I, I mean, the answer to that is yes. And I think you really need to look into the, the, uh, the, the triclops. I think it's the, to me, it's the best thing going. Next question from Ace Rifles NV. Any plans for Zeiss to make straight spotters? Um, I, I certainly know that it's been talked about. I, I don't know any time frames. Um, I, it's a question that we get asked often. Um, it's a question that I ask often. 
Uh, and so I would just tell you that, that my hope says is that yes, it, it's coming. Um, but I, I, I literally, I could, it would be merely a guess at this point, but it's a valid question. And I, I think they're going to answer it someday. I just don't know when. Rainwater Connor says, how far can you effectively glass with 15 by 56 binoculars? Jeez. Um, well, I guess the keyword in that sentence is effectively, um, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of like that. 15s kind of have that 12 to 1500 yard where you're where you're really picking stuff apart. You get out to that 2000, you know, when you start getting beyond 2000, you start, you know, maybe start leaning on the spotting scope to really pick up detail. And again, um, I was going to say 800 to 1200 well, is kind of in the bread basket. Yeah, I, I would say I, I don't disagree with that. You know, I don't. I, I mean, I, I. If you said eighteen to fifteen hundred, I think that that you're you, you've done really well and, and can do do well with fifteens. So I just marry those two up, and I agree wholeheartedly. Dylan Thompson, twenty twenty three. If I'm buying the best glass I can buy, does the conversation start and end at Swarovski? Well, I, no, I don't think it starts and ends at Swarovski because I, I love Swarovski. Um, and I think Shrovsky is at that table, but I think that, that so is Leica, and I think you know that so is Zeiss, and there's good products, and again, um, we keep stressing on this. Like, if you just want to take 10 to 42s, and you take Leica and the, and the, and the, the, uh, the, um, the Ultravid HD Pluses, and you take the, the, the HTs, or I'm sorry, the, the SFs, and the ELs or the SS from from Zeiss and the ELs from Swarovski, I I think you're at a point where you're like it, glass doesn't get any better than that. They're 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 as manufactured as well as you can possibly manufacture them, and it's the best glass in the world. And I think you need to look behind them yourself and make a decision. Because I mean, and, and and here's the. I can glass with all three of those and be really effective. Right. Sam Johnson, what tips and tricks have you learned this season? New optics, insight you learn. Uh, Cody, I've been using those um, Zeiss Victory RF range finding binoculars, 10 by 42. Um, I kind of say that I'm a Swarovski guy just because I've used Swarovski products in almost every category for a long, long time. I have to say, I think the Zeiss Victory RFs are phenomenal. I really like the button on the right side, I, I, and it's interchangeable. Well, so I love you the can't fact put that you, the left, you, you go into put, the app and you make a change, and, it, and you're, yeah. it's left right. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I like the fact that as you know, if I was using them bow hunting, which I didn't this season, as far as having a tag myself, but the ability to re read under thirty three yards. Yep. Um, is huge, and I like the fact that the ballistics with the app, you know, everything's calculated. You can put in your bullet. You can put in all the stuff, and it, it translates right into uh, the range finder. Um, so for me, something, you know, right now, I mean, it's hard for me to say I'm, I'm quote-unquote a Swarovski guy. I mean, they don't pay me <laughs> nothing, but I've just always, I right. love Swarovski. Right. I'm telling you, I think the Zeiss RF, I mean, I think, they're the best in class right now for my eyes. Um, I, think I think it's better than the Swarovski EL, and I think the optically they're very, very similar. Right. But I think having those three things that I mentioned for right now is better than me. But what I like about it is I like the fact that I'm probably not the only one that thinks that. And it's going to push Swarovski. I cannot wait to see well, what they're going to come out with. And that's all I would say is is that I'm. It's like Zeiss. Okay, so here's a list of things that nobody's done yet, and we're going to do them. And I think, and this is why I love the competition of it. Exactly. It's all it's going to do is force everybody to make a better product. Yeah. And, 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 and better or better glass or whatever the deal is. You've got to bring your A game to that because and people got to be pushing on it. Yeah, and I think one of the you know, I've had a few people say, "Oh, you're a Swarovski guy." Of course, you're going to say Swarovski is the best. Well, yeah. in this case, I think the the Zeiss RF, the Victory RFs, they're better, and I'm going to use whatever I think is best. Well, I don't care what it, the manufacturer it, is. I don't care what we're talking about, whether it be optics or any right. type of gear. 
I'm going to use whatever I and think is best and puts me in a better position to the succeed. The best part about that is, is that the other thing I love about what, what they're doing with that is, is that if there's changes or there's updates to the program, you, you just go in and update it. Like if there's corrections or anything that, that comes up that in, in, you know, in electronics and everything there, sometimes there's funny things that happen and that you're able to go in and down, you know, up, update your, your profiles and you get it back. And you're like, Oh, so everything's good to go. Everything's fixed. So I just, I love that. The fact that we have that at our fingertips. Uh, question here, Blakey's 21. What exactly does the field flattener do in an EL and benefits gained from it? Well, I, I, I mean, the truth of it is, is it, it really, what it is, is it's, it's the, the way that the glass is ground and the shape it's ground in. And it, what it really does is create a, 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 a bigger edge to edge clarity. Um, you know, on the, on the outside edges of the binocular. So, um, and I will tell you, there are some people that have looked through the ELs and they're like, Whoa, that's kind of different. And people talk about the rolling ball effect with like the Zeiss and the, and I've never once picked up a pair of ELs and had the rolling ball effect. Um, I've picked up other manufacturers and had the rolling ball effect. And that, is a, to me a 100% personal deal. And um, I don't know. They're, <laughs> they're one of the clearest pair of binoculars I've ever looked through. And I love putting them on a tripod. And man, can I see with them. So, uh, yeah. Next question, S21 underscore 2121. Any new line of Swarovski 15s coming out in the near future? I have not heard of any. That, that is, I have not heard of anything with 15s. I mean, th- look, they just changed the 15s. Three w- years w- ago. I mean, yeah, within two and a half or three years ago. And, and the fact of it is, is that they took everything that I, I mean, Jay, you might find this funny. I don't even know if I ever said this. I've never owned a set of 15s before the, the, the 15s I have now. Because I always felt like I was looking through an elongated tube. Um, I just didn't, they, I, I just wasn't comfortable behind them. I had been using Zeiss for so many years. Um, all the things that wrapped up in that, when they came out with the new ones, the, 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 the latest model of, of 15s, it absolutely changed me instantly. You know, they went to a, a different prism. They they shortened them up. They made them lighter. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you when I look through them that that whole elongated tube feel. You know, that perceived um, feeling that I would have. I, it just completely went away. So um, I don't know. With only being two years behind those, I, I just haven't heard of anything. K Brunk twenty one. I hear you talking about glassing with fifteens and tens. Anything wrong with twelves? Absolutely not. I mean, 12s are kind of right in the middle between the 10s and the 15s. Uh, I had for years the um, 12, uh, yeah. e- 12 by 50 ELs uh, was from Swarovski, and I used them for years. I always just found myself always having the 10s around my neck um, and then always having the 15s in my pack. And there was opportunities. My hands have a little bit of vibration and shake to them. I have ever since I was probably in high school. I couldn't handhold the 12s as good as I could handhold sure. the 10s. So a little bit lower power, didn't right. have as much vibration. Um, but I know a lot of people, they're just running 12s, they're handholding them, and cool. they're putting them on a tripod, and they love them. And I, I think they're great for finding game. Yeah. But for me personally, I either go 10s around the neck and keep 15s in the pack, and that's just what I, I do. I, I think that the, the other thing that somebody has to answer is, is that me personally, if – if he has a set of 10s around his neck and he's got a set of 12s in the bag, I just don't think there's enough separation between 10s and 12s for me to go, oh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to carry both 10s and 12s. So, like, I carry 8s a lot on my on my neck, and 12s would be a natural progression. I think that's an easy, you know, you're four more, you know, it, it's four times the power. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good separation. Um, or, you know, eights to fifteens, but 
like so many people use tens. I just don't think that twelves are for me. Uh, as much as I love the, tw- I, I think honestly the twelve fifty ELs are one of my favorite pieces of glass. They are phenomenal. ever. And when you mount them on a tripod, it is unbelievable to me how well you can see through them. Yep. Um. But, but I just yeah I I I I don't know I just I think that there's uh it, it hits that middle of the road part and I would just. You know, tell somebody if they've already got tens, I would go to the fifteens. So, got a question here, Steve underscore Bellport. What is the difference between Swarovski ELs and SLCs? Um, you know, it, it comes down to uh, they're different um, uh, optical systems. There's um, the ELs uh, have some different filters in them. Um, they're a magnesium body. They're a dual bridge design. Uh, you know, it, it's it, when you look at an SLC, I, I have never once picked up a set of 10 or 42 SLCs and looked at the difference between those and the ELs and thought, man, I just, there's no way I'd ever own a set of SLCs. I think that the glass in both of them is, is phenomenal. Um, I've always kind of lent myself and, and kind of lend, you know, my liking to the to the ELs. Um, I like the Suora Vision. I like the Field Flattener. But, uh, you know, I, again, I'll say it. If someone said, okay, well, you got to have the 10 SLCs, I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, I, I think they're really, really close. You know, there's about a $700 price difference. Um, and, and I think a guy has to, put them both to his eye and make a decision and go with the one that he likes best. Yeah. I mean, I think when I put EELs up to my eye and compared to an SLC, I just see a smidge of a difference. That's all I'd call it as a smidge. I think I used SLC tens on a tripod for years and spotted a lot of stuff with them. Um, but that EL, there is just some wow factor. There's some sharpness. It just pops, um, just a little bit better to me than the SLC, but SLC is still a phenomenal piece of glass. Uh, Cody, we've we've uh, answered a bunch of questions here. Uh, guys, I want to encourage you, if you have optics questions, uh, please reach out. You can send uh, me an email at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. You can send me a direct message on Instagram uh, at jscottoutdoors. Also, I would like to let you know, give Cody a call. He loves to talk to you guys. 702-847-8747. That's extension two. You can also send him an email directly at optics at gohunt.com. And again, I'm routinely getting messages every single day from customers who have, uh, you know, been at the uh, hand, if you will, of Cody with his customer service and really trying to make sure that the customer is taken care of. Uh, and I appreciate you taking care of the J. Scott Outdoors yeah, listeners. No problem. Um, guys, make it, make sure you mention the podcast and uh, Cody's always going to take care of everybody, but he, he really puts on the, uh, white gloves, if you will, for the J Scott outdoors listeners. Uh, guys, I also want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Uh, just the support that you guys give is amazing. Uh, like I said, you can email me if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, uh, jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. also want to thank Go Hunt, the gear shop, uh, sponsors of this podcast. They've been with me from the beginning. I appreciate that, Cody. Yes, sir. Uh, Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Go to kuyu.com to find out more information about Kuyu. Uh, also, phone scope. Use the jscott19 promo code. You're going to get a 10% discount. And then Onyx Maps, uh, the best phone app uh it's replaced the gps uh for me i love the fact that you can toggle between aerial satellite and hybrid you can mark waypoints you can measure with the line distance tool Uh, you've got public versus private land overlay just a just a really really good tool Uh, we were actually using it today helping uh, a customer of yours uh, with with some cooster information and uh, cody i really appreciate you having you on the podcast i know the listeners just get such a great um, feel for how you do business and your knowledge of optics sure. and I love being here just appreciate your friendship and all that all that you do and I look forward yeah. to the future thank you for having me and uh, just remember put your eyes behind it take a look at things it's about you not about me I will just help you through that maze of, of glass 
and it, it, it it's I find that often, Jay, and not to get off on a tangent, but it's people they they just they they want to give me a scenario, and they sometimes just get lost on what what really works best for them, and at the end of the day. It really is about their scenario, their situation, and what works for them. And it's not always just about me or you. Or it, it really, um, it, and I think people genuinely appreciate that. And so, the fact that I get to talk about glassing and, and finding animals, which is my favorite thing to do, um, I, 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 I'm just lucky. Right on, buddy. God bless. Thank you, sir. Have a great day.